Welcome to episode 53 of the Clarity Compressed Podcast. My name is Paul J. Daly. I will be your host. Last week was our one-year celebration anniversary. This week marks the beginning of year number two. I've been making excuses ever since you went away. Making excuses. Definitely going for two years. Maybe we're going for five years. I don't know. Um, got the live stream going today. Check it out. Say hi, everybody. We got Instagram live going on while I'm doing the intro to the podcast. And um, since we have a long interview to show you that we're going to chop up so you can see parts of it. A really great interview coming up with um, a guy named John Luciano. He is the general manager of a, a Volkswagen dealer in Amarillo, Texas. And if you don't know where Amarillo, Texas is, it is basically uh, north and west. And when I was there, I don't know what I was thinking. I was expecting warm. It was freezing. So I went to Texas, spent a few days there. It was freezing. I think it probably was colder than it is in Syracuse or was in Syracuse. All of my Uber drivers were by far the nicest Uber drivers I've ever, 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 ever had. And they thanked me. The one guy thanked me for choosing Uber and he thanked me for coming to Amarillo. And then he said, because if there were no you, there'd be no us, literally unsolicited Uber driver in Amarillo. He was driving a big pickup truck. Like most of my Ubers were gigantic pickup trucks, which was awesome too. I don't know why that surprised me, but it did. This week, I was thinking of what theme I could use to tie up this, this conversation that I had with John. And the theme is no excuses because this is a guy who has every opportunity and could make every excuse in the book for why his dealership didn't make it. His dealership did made it, did make it, did made it. But he could have every excuse in the book for why he could not be successful as a Volkswagen dealer in truck country, Northwest Texas, Amarillo. A Volkswagen dealership? And I'll tell you a little bit more about that. Well, let's talk about the excuses he could have had. So it's a Volkswagen dealer in a place where most of the vehicles, probably the majority, are trucks, right? Small town, two, 300,000. There has not been a Volkswagen point or a Volkswagen store in Amarillo for like 27 years. So there's no legacy customers. There are no lease book where, you know, people are leasing everything. Zero, nothing. And... Five years ago, maybe six, five to six years ago, the first VW store in 27 years opened. Now, let me explain to you. So already it seems like a disadvantage, right? Okay, we're going to sell Volkswagens, right? A kind of, I don't know, I might get in trouble. Kind of like a hippie vehicle. Not really, but hippie yippie. I owned a Volkswagen at one point. I love the company. So not judging. Don't get all upset. But I mean, we're talking like truck country. We're talking like poor gasoline in a hole in the ground. So the rattlesnakes come up so that we can shoot them so that they don't bite us and we don't die. Like that's Amarillo. And I know my Amarillo friends are probably laughing at me right now. That's, that's what I took back. Um, so that is the level of Texas that we're in. There's a place there where you can buy a 72 ounce steak. And if you eat the whole thing, it's free for real Amarillo, Texas. So Volkswagen store, not quite the Amarillo crowd hasn't been one for 27 years no legacy customers, opens a store. Now, Volkswagen, let me explain a little more context. So Volkswagen as Volkswagen North America in the United States has an average of a 2% market share. That means of all the vehicles sold, new vehicles sold in the market, 2% of them would be Volkswagens, okay? And that's just the average of everywhere. So what do you think that average should be in Amarillo, Texas? Should be less than 2%, right? If anyone had an excuse to have a 1% or less, it would be Amarillo, Texas. Well, let me tell you that the Volkswagen share of street Volkswagen in Amarillo, Texas is 10%. 10. Not two, but 10. Why? We're going to talk about that in the interview, but... What? So John is an amazing guy. He's a, someone who cares about people, but he's also a guy that doesn't make excuses. And so talking about excuses today, it is one of the easiest things to do in our culture is to make an excuse. Maybe it's always been that way. Honestly, I said in our culture, that's not accurate. 
It's one of the easiest things to do as a human being is to make excuses. Let's go back to Adam and Eve, right? I said, I've said this before. When So Eve bites the fruit, and God says to Adam, Adam, then she gives to Adam, Adam bites the fruit, and God shows up and says to Adam, hey, why did you eat the fruit? He's like, well, she gave it to me, right? Excuses. It's just hardwired in us to make excuses. So if anyone could make excuses about selling Volkswagens in Amarillo, Texas, it would be Mr. Luciano. Am I right? But I thought it was a good time to talk about why do we make excuses in our lives? And today, everyone watching this podcast, everyone on the live stream, myself included, has a propensity to want to make an excuse because we don't want to take accountability for something that's not favorable. We want to blame our spouses. We want to blame our coworkers. We want to blame market conditions. We want to blame who's president. We want to blame whatever, the weather. We want to blame our mom. We want to blame our dad. We want to blame our siblings. We want to blame everybody. Why? Because if we blame them and it's their fault, we can somehow justify the fact that we're not responsible for it. That's not true. When you take extreme ownership, shout out to Jocko Willink, extreme ownership, you stop making excuses and you start getting better results in your life because you've taken ownership of the result yourself. Now, yes, some things you can't change, right? There's some things you can't affect. Like if a car T-bones me in an intersection, I couldn't have like decided not to get T-boned. But what I'm saying is when you take ownership and responsibility over the things in your life, it suffocates the excuses. And it's not until you suffocate the excuses that you can start making progress. I talk about branding and marketing and like we don't have enough business. Customers don't like our sale. They don't like our marketing. They're not connecting with it. Guess what? Take ownership. Stop making excuses. Well, people don't buy Volkswagens in Amarillo, Texas. Bullcrap. They do. Five times more than in other markets in the country. So I'm really, really, really looking forward to you meeting John. We're going to cut into the interview because it's a good, uh, rich, full interview. I want you to be able to see it and meet him. He's an amazing person. If you run an organization, this man in this interview knows how to treat people. I can tell you from non-interview time that I spent with him and just watch the people come up to him, ask him questions, give him hugs. Um, you could tell he's a mentor at heart and it shows across the board. So I hope you enjoy this interview and I hope you stop making excuses because they're not helping anything. John, thanks for spending some time with us today. Thanks for having us. Thanks for coming to my humble abode. In Texas. So we are shooting live in Amarillo, Texas. We are. Um, and let me just say, this is one of the nicest places I've ever been. The people, I had, we had probably five Uber drivers Four of them picked me up in a in a pickup truck, yeah. which is a first for me. <laughs> and everyone, the one last night, he said, I just want to thank you for choosing Uber and thank you for coming to Amarillo. Isn't that great. I couldn't believe it. It's our it's our whole culture. We're we are still we're 180, 190,000 people, still a very small town. Amazing. If, yeah, if you're if you're not locally owned, it's a tough town to do business in. You uh, we have two Starbucks. If you can imagine for a city this size, yeah. we have no Circle K, no 7 Eleven, mm -hmm. no, the convenience stores are locally owned with the mm -hmm. Tutan Totem family, the Pakistan people. That's it. We do business local. It's just old school. So, were you born and raised here? Or where born did you come and, from? Born and raised in El Paso, Texas, about, okay. about 350 miles from here. Does that still count as local? Yeah. It's not owned. It's Texas. Yeah. We're, we're, you know, that's how we are. If you're born in Texas, you're a Texan. So, when you say local, you mean Texas. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so, if Starbucks was a Texas company, then it'd, be, it'd be okay. It'd be all right. Yeah, just I, like the Cowboys aren't here, but everybody's a Cowboy fan. So tell me about this. We framed it up in the back because it's so interesting, but where did this stuff come from? This all started probably the very first day we opened back in September of 13, and we had what we called Calling All Slug Bugs, and we ran an ad campaign about that. There's, you know, we've been infested, there's bugs in Amarillo, and just really took off fun with it. And we talked about bringing Volkswagen back, and we talked about... Everybody probably over 25 years old has a Volkswagen story. You had one in the family or you rode in the back seat. Right. 
I talk about we had a square back for a long time. There was five kids. I was the youngest. So I was always in the back back of the square back looking that way. I was probably 11 before I ever knew that a billboard had something on the front. <laughs> you know, it was only, all I ever saw was the backs. You know, and so those are the kind of fun stories. And we were talking about those. And then it just started coming. And people just started bringing, hey, well, I want you to have this. And I want you to have that. And you can just cars and Hot Wheels cars and different things that tie back to Volkswagen and Volkswagen stories and just been lots and lots of fun. You know, the, the Beatles that appears, the Beatles and Tile walking across Abbey Road. But if you look in the background, there's a, be- there's a, a Beetle. Volkswagen Beetle. So it just doesn't stop. So that kind of brings me to the main reason I think that you're a great guest for the show and that the mm-hmm. audience, which is a lot, a lot of automotive people, but a lot of business people, too, who just are looking for a better way to do business or a way to connect. Right. Um, Brad, our mutual friend, used to work for you. Yes. Um, I met him at a, at a conference one year. He told me the story of how this store was the first Volkswagen point to open in Amarillo. So obviously, we just got done talking Texas yeah. and trucks. Trucks. Right. We Seven tried, out of ten. Right. Truck or SUV in our market. Right. That's before we even have a Volkswagen store. Right. And kind of the impact that the store made, I know you just won an award. Actually... I want, want to show the award. We'll show this. So you just won an okay. award, and we'll talk about that in a second from Volkswagen. But one of the main things that um, really impressed me was how you got here with a different method of marketing and reaching out to the community. Absolutely. So can you tell me kind of what happened over the last five years and why you think it's been so impactful? You know, it, it's probably two things. It, it is an iconic brand. People can relate back to it. Mm-hmm. It's a great brand. It's mm-hmm. safety is huge. Mm-hmm. Our cars are test, you know, they're they're, they're crash tested at one twenty, not seventy. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of there's a lot that. of story there. So if you we get a lot of sixteen to twenty one year old kind of kind of be their first car. Their parents do some research and find out. Okay, that's what I want my kid in. Mm-hmm. These are walk away type cars from from big crashes. Mm-hmm. So that was part of it. Great mileage, mm-hmm. you know. And so we were able to sell that because our community. Amarillo proper is about 180, mm-hmm. but the whole area is probably more in the maybe 300, 310, mm-hmm. because for about a 100 miles circumference, there's just tip, typical Texas. There's little town, little town, little town, 2,000, 5,000, 6,000. Yep. Well, at some point, you got to come to the big market, right? Mm-hmm. And it's funny, you know, where you're from, Philly, New York, big market is millions Syracuse, of people, right? Right. Syracuse is, uh, greater Syracuse is like seven or 800,000. Yeah, big so market. We're, we're considered like the big market for yep. these little towns. So yeah. this is where the doctors are. This is where Sam's is. Yep. This is where the you know the so you come in. So there's a lot of travel there. So we were able to really really leverage our TDI diesel in, in, in our Passat at that time. Wow, those are the breakers kicking on. So the store is automated. Uh. So don't worry, it'll stop. <laughs> the uh, kind of fun. The fun part of it is we were able to advertise. You can go 800 miles on a tank of gas. Or you can go from Amarillo to Dallas, drive around Dallas and back for forty dollars. And there it is. People came in like, okay, it was kind of the old game. Okay, I got to call you on that, but you know, I got to call you. And we even did a lot of fun. We got some radio DJs that kind of called us on it one day. Hey, I'm playing your spot, bro, and I'm I'm finding this hard to believe. Real, right? Yeah. So I challenged him. I said, okay, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to put you in the car, but you have to give me five minutes every morning on the show. Until that tank of gas is gone. And like 21 days later, we're still going. And he's like, okay. That's brilliant. Yeah. He's like, he's like there's, there's no bullet. Brilliant. He says, I'm still driving this car. On the and same tank, tank of fuel. Yeah. yeah. He said, this is crazy. <laughs> so with Brad's help and just being able to push that out, we just had a lot of fun with it. This Volkswagen store in a market that didn't have a V-Dub store for 27 years right. in a truck community... <laughs> that opened in a time when there was a lot of scandal in Volkswagen, right? Yeah. The diesel thing, right? And it's it's even funny how far that seems from our memory now, but it was yeah. the most important thing, right? We're talking, it was all in the news, right? We have congressional yeah. hearings. Oh, there's no question. You had every reason to say, well, that's why this store yeah. has probably a less than average market share of Volkswagens to other vehicles, but... What the most important part is, is what is it, 11%? Yeah, we're the highest in the country. So in the entire country, more Volkswagens percentage-wise per capita or per capita per market market than any other Volkswagen store in the country. That includes every market you think a V-Dub store would be amazing. Right. Amarillo, Texas, 11%. What's the the average? 
2.3 to 3 1. So five times almost <laughs> what the average is when you have every excuse to be at like 1%. Right. For us, the difference was we sell experience. Mm-hmm. Everybody's got a car. What you don't have is you don't have us. You don't have street. You don't have John. You don't have that salesperson. Um, I'll tell you a really classic, classic story about the culture of my store. One of our salespeople, she answers her phone. We, we really push our salespeople to be all in, all out. I appreciate you so much for doing business with me. If anything happens car-related, I'm your car person. Mm-hmm. If you need a battery, if you need wipers, if you have a flat tire, mm-hmm. I, you know, if it's bad, call 911 first, and then I expect <laughs> right, the second right. call, right? right? I want to be a part of that because I appreciate you that much. We had a lady call, totally in tears, her daughter's first ballet recital, blows a tire, she's going to miss it. She's just freaking, nobody, she's called the record, nobody's showing up. My employee jumps in the car, zooms to where she's at, just gets out, gives her the keys, says, go. Go. Get to the recital. Right, I'll handle this. I got this. I'll pick it up. I'll tow it. Okay, long story short, they've bought five cars from us. They'll never never buy somewhere else. Yeah, but that's the culture that we try and build is if you'll love on your customers and you'll love on your community and you'll do it right with a servant's heart Mm -hmm. and do it for all the right reasons, Mm -hmm. 11% 11% is possible, right? You know, Volkswagen is just showing you to everyone else. At times. And yeah. they're saying, you can do this. Yeah. Do you think that's possible with any brand? I do. Any manufacturer? I do. Because people are people. I think it's the only differentiation. Because, like, like I said, with, with the internet now, you can buy anywhere. Yeah. You know, and freight's getting down low enough. And if yep. the guy wants the deal. Yep. But the difference is you come in here, you meet us, same thing, just like what you see behind me. These are all for our customers. I'll go back real quick to our what you talked about, the diesel deal. And, and we had great, great success and, and very loyal customers with it. And the difference was is so many dealers were telling us that the customers were coming in mad. And, you know, how could this happen? And, you know, they it, were mad because they felt like they'd be, they've been betrayed by the brand, right? right? Exactly. Because they bought and they had an expectation this vehicle was one way. Right. Within five days... It broke on September 19th, and on September 24th of 15, we, we reached out to every diesel TDI customer that we had and brought them in for dinner. Lined up the showroom, got everybody to sit down. Everybody felt pretty good. Mm-hmm. You didn't feel so isolated, yeah. so betrayed, right? You sat across the table, well, I got one too. Right. You know, but, I, I, right. but I love my car. Yeah, me too. You know, right, I love right. my car. And these guys are amazing, yeah, right? And, and so what we made very, very clear was no matter what happens, and at that time we didn't know what would happen, no matter what happens, we're there. You bought it from us. It's still my responsibility. Yep. We're still going to stand behind you. And so our loyalty rate was very, very high because of that. And we filmed it, and then it got out, and it got pushed out to a lot of dealers saying, hey, this is this is the answer. Mm-hmm. Go love on your customers. Mm-hmm. Take care of them. And then Volkswagen came back and just did an amazing thing. You know, you, you either got a ton of cash or yep. you got a ton of cash and turned your car back in and got another car. Yep. It was huge. They went uh, all the way. All the way. Yeah, and that was that was a nice thing. And it was the right thing to do. Yep. They Volkswagen recently created a new position, uh, a global brand ambassador. <laughs> right? That was a real surprise to and, see that come about. And so this is a global brand ambassador that is an example to the entire world of what the Volkswagen brand embodies. And I happen to be sitting next to yeah. the inaugural. I am him. Glenn. <laughs> so what does that mean? So tell me the story of how you found out about this and kind of what you're going to be up to as a result. They, they came into town and they were honoring us. With, we had won an award called the Diamond Pen. And it's one of five dealers in the country each year wins it. There's 20 globally. Mm-hmm. And we had just come back from that. And then um, we wanted to make sure that with our staff, they understood that they won it. I didn't win it. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm just, I'm just fortunate enough to be the one that sits over in that mm-hmm. chair. But we talk a lot about if I don't show up today, the store is going to still run fine. Mm-hmm. But it's the lower level. It's the, it's the girl answering the phone. It's the guy that unlocks the doors. If he doesn't show up, we have a problem. Yep. If the tech doesn't show up. And so we, we, our hierarchy is completely different. It's upside down. But I said, look, it's not me. You know, yes, some of the ideas, maybe some of the leadership, some of the things that we do are, you know, but they're the ones that actually run it. You know, they're the, they're the team. Mm-hmm. And so we wanted to come back and, and we, we offered and put this thing together for them to come here mm-hmm. and actually spend time with so the staff. So that the team could be honored. Right. So it's the team, not just you in Germany. Yeah, right? them. 
Yeah, I can't do it. So I mean, they said, okay, we'll come out. They were like, really? They, it was funny because they almost seemed kind of flabbergasted. You know, like, well, that, that's a great idea. <laughs> so they came out and they spent the day in the life of a Volkswagen dealer. So they hung out in the store and they spent time in finance and they spent time talking to all the employees. And the employees loved that because these are some of our VPs and, and our heads of the, of the company. Yeah. And it was it was so fun to humanize them, right? Mm-hmm. They're just another guy. Right. It's not a guy in a tower. Yeah. It's not a, a yeah. figure in a tower. Yeah. It's... I don't know Hans. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Hans Hein. Whatever. Yeah, they're just fantastic, and and they're such great guys. The second they came into the store, they just diverted and sat down in offices and sat down with the people. And what do you do? And this what is a special what I do. day. It was an incredible day. And then that night, we went to dinner with all the department heads, and we they all they split themselves up. Not one of them sat together. Mm-hmm. They sat with all the team. Got to meet their wives, talked about family, talked about, you know, just just culture and, and life in general. Have you spoken to your counterparts or anybody else in the Volkswagen, you know, GM community? Have people reached out yet? Yes. About that? Yeah. And how, how's that going? <laughs> Been very humbling. They uh, just all of them. Hey, you know, you guys, you're the store. You're the guys that should do it. That's fantastic. Can't wait to see it. You know, send pictures. Um, it's going to be fun to see it. So we're really, really looking forward to it. We absolutely love this brand. Um, you know, it it just, it's gotta be a God thing that I got put into this as crazy as I am and goofy like this, right. (laughs) To fall into this brand. Well, that's what stands out. It just suits me. Well, that's what stands out these days. It's not the fact that there's somebody following the rote on how you should run a business or how you should oh, market a business, yeah. right? Because you're this is everything We do but, it wrong. <laughs> right, right, you do it wrong. But I think we live in a day and age when the weirdness, if Seth Godin would call it that, would well, gotta be a little weird. Sure. But it really is unique and you don't, you can't fake this, right? right? People don't usually fake different. We have so many customers still because we tell them, look, coffee's always free. Just come by. We just want to see you. Yeah. And they're like, well, I know, but I feel bad if I came in and I didn't buy something. And I'm like, why? You did. You're our friend. You're family. Yeah. You're part of it. We, I expect to see. We, we run our televisions around the store, and they've got different. We run community mm-hmm. ads for what's going on, mm-hmm. what we're a part of, what our culture is. We just want to be a part of it. And we're so blessed to have the community bless us. It makes it so much fun to give back. And we love getting out there. So, I heard one story about... Um, you teamed up with a, a local Mexican food restaurant called Abuelos. Yes. Um, can you tell me about that? Or can you tell the audience about that? Because I think the position of, you know, what we'll call cause marketing, right? We're not marketing to sell a product. And this is right. very much like when it's a part of your brand to give no back to the community. We're not selling. I love that stuff because I think that that's what really builds the long-term brand ROI. So it, what's... It started as a conversation, and we had actually taken my mother-in-law to the hospital mm-hmm. at BSA, and it was just winter time, mm-hmm. and it, it, it's an incredible hospital, so well run, and we started talking to people, and it was three forty-five in the morning, maybe, and and you could just kind of see the tiredness mm-hmm. on a couple of these people, and we had asked them, you know, how long have you been here? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, probably thirty hours or something. You know, and have you eaten anything? Well, you know, I had some crackers. And, wow! And you're going, wow, the commitment's incredible. <laughs> well, you know, we had some people sick, and so I had to stay. And you're going, how that? You know, that that's amazing, right? With, with that kind of care. And we were talking to other people, and other people were saying the same thing. Yeah, you know, I was there, or my daughter-in-law works there. And boy, it's tough sometimes because if they're really busy and there's sick people out there, you can't just say, "Hey, boss, I'm going to punch out for an hour and mm-hmm. walk out." It just can't happen. Mm-hmm. So we teamed up with this other Mexican restaurant called Abuelos, and we just partnered it, made a really nice card, mm-hmm. and we made meals. And these were these were full-blown Mexican plates: Ch- taco, enchilada, whole thing. And then what we did is we just started taking it down there at different shifts. And just putting it in their waiting room with just a little card that said, thank you from Abuelos and Street Auto Group. That's it. Just have some food, have some nourishment, put some drinks with it, and snuck back out the door. Nothing, not looking for anything, but mm-hmm. just to really try and help somebody that's really helping other people. And the result of that, how did they respond? Like, what did you hear back from it? Oh, it's crazy. Yeah, it's still to this day. I went in with a kidney stone on, on Christmas Eve. And they recognized my voice from radio. Yep. And they were like, you're, you're from the street. You're the street guy. I said, yeah. yeah. It's so awesome when you guys do that because we still do it. And we, we try and take care of the nurses. And it's, you know, it's not, it's just the time to be able to drive out and go grab something. Yeah. You know, or run to the cafeteria. Well, they, you know, they eat in there all the time. 
just something just so a little bit different. To where say do you think you. they consider? Right? It's yeah. like when that happens, yeah. where are you going to consider buying a car? We hear even it in though, stores. right? Even though it's you know not an expectation, but people want to do business with people they know actually For care. Us, it's just a byproduct. It's the essence of essence of giving, mm-hmm. right? Okay, well, I'm giving you something. There's no ask on the mm-hmm. other side of it. No, there was nothing but just just the names and a thank you. No, no, hey, special deals. No, you know, the typical car business that you want. Oh, run. yeah. And by the way, yeah, there's yeah, a bird yeah. dog on the back yeah. of this card. Right? If yeah. you know anybody, mm-hmm. maybe you're not shy, but if you yeah. know someone, right? right? No. So that ruins the whole give. Yeah, none of that. That to me is impactful in the sense that, like, imagine if, you know, just thinking like this world, imagine if every dealership or every small business was thinking in that way. Can you imagine mm-hmm. the good? I mean, people write checks, right? It's important when an organization, you know, I think most, if probably I can say all dealerships give back to the community. They do. Right? Yeah. So I think that... They're very good about it. Yeah. I mean, they probably give more than the next 10 businesses in general, right? So for the stigma that dealers kind of have, I think if we were really able to see that... Right. Very I think philanthropic. That, very very much so. Yes. However, I do think that this type of giving spurs another level of empathy and another level of care. And it's a little bit of work. It's more work. But the result from it... I mean, you you it's, roped in another yeah, business, right? So now you kind yeah, of brought in another. Especially when you, when you pull up and you park in the emergency bay and you're just trying to unload the food and the security guard's having a fit, right? You can't park there. <laughs> you know, and then it comes around the corner. Oh, oh, you, oh no, it's okay. I got you. Oh, yeah, yeah. I got you. Hey, yeah. Leave him alone, yeah, everybody. Leave him alone. Right. Right. <laughs> very, very funny. What's your, what's your favorite way to see a car sold? My favorite way? Yeah. I love the ones where it's a complete and total surprise. And we love to do that. We've got bows and we've got different things. We'll drive over and hide it in the garage for you. We'll show up in the middle of the night. You tell us how we can make it that next extra. And we try and film a lot of that. And one of the big tricks that we do that works real well is if it's, say, it's a young girl and it's going to be her first car, we'll we'll have dad say, hey, you know, I was going to go back the next day and do it. And I'm sorry, honey, you know, it got sold. And I know that was the one you want, but I'm going to look and maybe Saturday we could go there for a little while and see what other cars they have. Well, in the meantime, we'll have the car here with the bow on it all decorated. And the, and they'll still kind of see it and they'll think, well, that must be for the other person. Yeah, they must be And then, then you come through the door and then you watch their face and it sets in. Oh, that's and great. They start looking at their parents, you know, really, really? And then, then here comes the squeal, you know, <laughs> and, off, and off it goes. And, and you're those, filming this and you're yes, capturing yeah, it. Yeah, there's so much fun. Those are truly the favorites. The other favorites, too, is when you really do a good job and you've worked with the customer and they came in looking for one vehicle and you were able to realize that vehicle is really not going to serve their mm-hmm. purpose. You know, maybe it's a younger couple. and Well, I know, but, you know, kids are a couple of years away. Well, you hope they're a couple of years away. And you start really talking about it and they end up in a sport utility or they end mm-hmm. up in something and you help them understand that overall cost of ownership. And we really try and look at that because there's nothing worse than a year later going, hey, you know, gosh, this. this car's not right. It's yeah. not, I can't put the car seats in it. I can't yeah. do that. So we really train a lot and talk a lot about let's let's really talk about the next four years. Mm-hmm. What is this going to surface? Mm-hmm. Hey, it's a third car. It sits in the driveway. Then whatever you get want. whatever. Whatever it doesn't you want. even matter. Yeah, yeah, Just yeah. do what you want. Well, you know, sometimes you have to pick up your mom or your parents or you do others. Yeah, you know, we do. I didn't think about that. We better look at something with a third mm. seat. You know, and working with the husband sometimes because, oh, no, that's, you know, soccer mom. That's a van. That's a, whatever it is. Well, you'll you'll appreciate it later. That's and great. So being able to have somebody happy six months or a year later or come back in and just say, hey, one of my real favorites is when they come in, they say, hey, I'm going to keep this car. I love this car too much, but I'm going to get another well, car to do this. I does this. Yeah, to drive to work or I got to do that. And so we do a lot of that with the TDIs right now. On the repurchase of them, oh, yeah. they're huge, and the gas mileage is great, and two-year unlimited warranty. So we just we catch these people. The guy mm-hmm. guy says, "Well, I think I want a new car, but I drive thirty thousand miles a year." And you're you're going, like, "Hold on, you'll, you'll be out of warranty too fast." Hold that's on, that's not gonna yeah. work. Yeah, yeah, Let's talk right. about something here. Maybe you keep your truck. Mm-hmm. Maybe I can put you in this payment. You're going to save enough fuel that yep. you could do both. Wow, that's do the real so life, cool. Real life costs. Yeah, real life yeah because that's the great. guy the guy never wanted to give up his truck in the. First I've never place. heard of a dealer approaching it that way. We we really try and and. Take a couple of minutes and back you up. Let's let's talk about the whole situation. You mean a salesperson that's like, hey, let's slow this down. Exactly. You yeah. don't hear that. You don't. You don't. And one one deal is never worth it, you know, to push yeah. it the wrong way or yeah. get it done. It just always seems to Because you're going to lose a customer. It always seems to find its way back. Final so, question. Yeah. What, and now we're backing up 30,000 feet out of the car world. Sure. 
what do you want people to say about you in general when you're gone? We're going real gone. Gone, <laughs> gone, right? Gone, gone. At my age, that's... In the Amarillo yeah, soil yeah. Now somewhere. Now you're just being mean. No, <laughs> I mean, 50 years from now. <laughs> it, for me, if you're asking on a personal base, it was always to try to leave a mark back on the automotive business. And when I got in the business in, in the late 70s and early 80s, the one part that I always disliked about the business was the shadiness of it. Mm-hmm. You know, the atypical throw the keys on the roof, you know, the way he was dressed, the way he talked to you, it didn't matter, stuff you in the car. Mm-hmm. We've Every dealership I've had or been a part of, I've been very fortunate to have great partners and owners that that never was the way. And so our, our whole goal was to make it different, mm-hmm. to, to start knocking down that image mm-hmm. of what people think it is to buy a car. And mm-hmm. we, you know, we were rated, we were the number one Volkswagen dealer in the country with dealer rater this year. Wow. And we, and we had more responses than anybody where our customers said, guys, you got to go give these people a chance. You won't, it's, it's a, it's a car buying experience that you never expected and you'll never find anywhere else. And that's what you want. That's what I want. That's your mark. I want somebody to say, I bought cars from John and his team and street and street auto group. And every time it was a fair deal. You know, for Probably everybody not changing involved. that stigma of that, the car dealer, it. and I think that's very much aligned with what right. the our audience wants too. There's no question, and it and it's only right, and if and there's ways to do it, and, mm-hmm. and, and everybody comes out fine. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for spending thank you. time with us and our Anytime. audience. You guys are we love everything you do, and Ron, you know, Ron still talks oh. about you guys and Ron's hanging out together. Best. And Brad, it's wonderful because even though Brad's not with us anymore, he he will always be a part of the store. Oh yeah, you can and, tell when he yeah. walks in the door. Oh yeah, no, there's no question. He's got carte blanche. We still call him on a lot of questions. Um, he's a very very smart young man, a lot of fun. Uh, when you can control, control his ADD, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, he just is, channel it. I, I kid him all the time because I say he's got HD. ADD, which is high definition, like a TV. That's his, that's his, exactly his that's the is best all description there. I've ever heard. Yeah, but boy, when once you get him focused and on point, man, he is just like a laser beam. Man, he is he's something else, and he has taught us so much. And he's like I told him, he's he's a big part of that award. He's a big part Actually, of us. Would you mind tiger. grabbing it? Absolutely. I'd love to to yeah. just get it in the frame here. Yeah. We can set it right here in the middle. Yeah. So, so. this is the Volkswagen 2018 yep. Global Sorry. Ambassador Award. That's the first one they've ever made. Yep. And it's, it's amazing. It's very, very funny because when when Brad was first with us, there was only nine of us. And we were working out of a little temporary building. And How we many were, now? Uh, 57 <laughs> in five years. We I can remember talking to Brad and us having the conversations of – you know, we need to be bigger than Amarillo. And I'm, I'm thinking like, you know, hundred miles out, let's go, let's go grab some business out of Lubbock. Yeah. We're like, and, no, and Brad's like, no, no, let's, let's go to Syracuse, New York. Let's go to why, why, why globally? Why, why do we have to be that? That's, that's a great story we, too. And, and he, he was did, right. He was, we, I actually have a set of groupies in Australia and they listen to a country radio station from here, but they love my radio commercials. Because. It, but they love the radio commercials. They think they think I'm funny because we talk about Lamborghinis and we talk about Measure Smiths and we just talk about stuff that we talk about. And so about once or twice a year, I get a call from them, my two my two groupies, and they're just big Aussies. They swear they're going to come see us. I hope they do. It'll I bet you have more than two. Yeah, I bet was, you have more than two. But it was fun to realize that global reach, and and we watch through LinkedIn some of the stuff when we really get a really good story going, and then all of a sudden you'll see that. I think one of the ones that was fun to send back to Toyota was not to Toyota, but it was with Toyota. It was a Volkswagen thing that we had posted talking about us and our partnership with VCI and how much it, it works. And when you went back and you looked at the analytics of it, there was 27 high, what they call like um, high management employees at Toyota had viewed it. Oh, <laughs> right. Viewed, you could see it. Like, it. And, oh, then you saw, and then you saw Nissan and you saw, and, and it had, and, and LinkedIn actually contacted us. Because they were like, we just don't get exa- what is exactly in that message that is drawing Japan. I mean, it was we're, LinkedIn all, reached out and said, "This called, is getting this is, so much is, traffic from crate. It's so spread out." What was what was in there? We we were just talking about culture and talking about it's kind of like what we're talking about, but in as related to the car business. Yeah. yeah. So related. To everybody us. was tuning in. Yeah, they were just all the different the, manufacturers in the yeah, country. It was so, that was. Yeah. You know, when LinkedIn calls you and say, "What does that actually mean?" Like, yeah. you know, you've hit a nerve. What, what, what's the draw? And we just said, just I think we all want to be that person. Did they give you like yeah. the influencer? 
I think so. Badge at that point? Yeah. They better have. I'm going to check and we'll yeah, tell you. I, I, that's a good question. I don't know. They better have. So Brad, yeah. I figured it was a Brad thing at first, you know, because sometimes he'll right, prank me. He's yeah, so, yeah. I was kind of like, yeah. I'm like, oh, you yeah, thought whatever. he like, so, duplicated yeah, your yeah, yeah, So how do you know Brad? Uh, Brad who? <laughs> okay, wait a minute. Yeah. Hi. This is, that's fine. Well, again, yeah. what an amazing place. Thanks Thank again you. for having us. Yeah. And look forward to seeing the response to this as people learn more about this. Maybe you'll get some more calls. Thank you. You're the man. Oh, you're Thanks. the man. So I hope you enjoyed that interview. Um, I hope you took away a lot of what I was, what I took away from it, but also the things that I was saying, like no excuses in that man's voice. There's a mentor. There's a never say die. There's a, as somebody in the Instagram live stream just said, there's playing the cards that you're dealt. And in John's situation, um, I think he won the round, frankly. So thank you so much for listening and watching the Clarity Compressed community um, the podcast, the community, the the comments, all the interaction on LinkedIn. We had a LinkedIn post go to like 10,000 organic views last week. It's because there's something called connection that actually matters. So go check it out on LinkedIn. I'm also on the, all the other platforms at Paul The Daily. Have a couple speaking engagements coming up, maybe more. I'm actually going to be in New York City um, next week, or actually this third, oh, by the time you see this, it will be last week. Um, Going to be in, uh, where are we going to be? Where are we going to be? Driving Sales Presidents Club in New York City in April. And in May, we're going to be at the DMSC Convention, Digital Marketing Strategies Convention in Napa, California, teaching a workshop there. Um, aside from that, just reach out, connect, hit me up on the DM. It's where it's going down. Thank you for being part of the community. And if there's anything I can ever do to help you, please hit me up and let me know. Thank you. Pursue clarity and have an amazing week. Don't make excuses. None. Zero. None. No excuses. That's it. I'm out. I've been making excuses ever since you went away. Making excuses.